What's going on guys and welcome to 3 Point Thursday, a place where I give you guys three tips on anything film related. Today's episode is all about how to make your color grade pop, how to make it stand out. We've all seen those professional color grades where the subject really pops from that background. Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how we can achieve this. Step number one is all about color separation. And it can be something as easy as making your background cool and your subject a little bit warmer. Something that simple can really make your subject pop. You can also use colors that work well together. That's why the orange and teal look has been so popular because you can mix those two colors and your subject, if they got that orange skin tone, can really pop from that teal background. So this is the image that we'll be working with today and it's a HLG image. I've already color corrected the image. I've adjusted Luma, added more saturation back in and I've got it to a point that I'm fairly happy with. Skin tones are also 100% correct in this image. So what we need to now do is get into our color wheels, which we are gonna create a brand new color wheel. Do not use the one that you used to adjust to color correct, use a brand new color wheel. And what that will do is almost create like a second layer. So by creating a new color wheel, we now get shadows, midtones, and highlights once again. So what I wanna do here is, so because I know my subject has a lot of sun on their face and their skin tone is obviously like a tanned orange you want to sort of cool down that background just a little bit just to make their skin just pop that little bit more so we can do that by just adjusting our temperature slider and yes it's going to affect the whole image but we can correct that later on so i'll say somewhere there and then we can take the tint and take that towards the left also and it'll give us this kind of like a little teal look. So once we've done that, I will probably go towards mid-tones and just slightly push it towards the orange area just to start getting a little bit more orange into their skin. And as you guys can see, before and after, it's not that much of a difference, but it's enough to really just get it on the way to popping. And this sort of prepares you for step number two in the process, which will really dial in these colors to really get them moving. Step number two is all about finessing those color changes and really dialing them in to really get accurate, real saturated, nice colors. We do that by using color curves. And I know, don't be worried, color curves are actually really, really easy to use, especially how I'm gonna use them today. So for us to create color curves, we need to go back into our inspector, go down to hue saturation curves, click on that, and you will see all these curves come up. Now we have hue versus hue, hue versus sat, hue versus luma, luma versus sat. The only thing you guys need to worry about at the moment is hue versus sat and hue versus luma. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our eyedropper on hue versus sat, and we're gonna go select a point on our subject somewhere around there to take a sample. As you guys can see, an orange dot will appear and we can start raising that slightly. And as you guys will sort of notice, that will adjust the skin tones. So we don't wanna to go too crazy. We just wanna add a little bit more saturation somewhere maybe around there. And yeah, I'm kind of happy with that at the moment, but we can always adjust it later. So the next thing we need to do is take our Hue versus Luma and do the same thing. Take a sample of their skin again, somewhere around there we see another orange dot appear and we can start playing with that again. Now, you don't wanna to go too crazy because you know then your subject will just look really fake in the image. So you just want enough in there just to start making them pop out of the, the background. I would think somewhere around there. Just keep an eye on your waveforms over here just to make sure that you're not clipping. But we can go for a bit of a high key look, which is usually used in uh, fashion because it's it just gets rid of all those imperfections on the skin and women love it so you can go to that point of almost overexposure but not there yet you know just just under that clipping point so i would say somewhere maybe around there will do the trick as you guys can see a before and after straight away our subject is really starting to pop now to really make sure that our skin tones are correct i would suggest to grab a draw mask tool in your effects presets, drag that onto the clip, go back to the inspector, make sure it's selected and just draw a mask around your subject just to double check that we are, you know, our skin tones are correct. We don't want them swaying too much towards magenta or too much towards green. We want it spot on. So as you guys can see over here, we are swaying just a little bit towards the yellow green side. It's not too much, but we can compensate for that. What we need to do is we need to go back into our color wheels, 
uh, we can go into the second color wheel, the one that we created, and we can take the tint and we can just move that back towards magenta, just slightly, just somewhere around there. And that really should do the trick. So if we go back to our inspector, we can delete the mask, just get rid of it. And straight away, our skin tones are looking 100% correct. Now we can obviously go back into our hue versus saturation curves and just adjust that saturation a little bit if we want. You don't want to overdo it. I would think somewhere around there will probably do the trick. Probably around there. Yeah, that should do the trick. Step number three is all about creating a vignette. And a vignette is really powerful because even if you just use a vignette and you miss the other two steps, you will still get that separation from your subject to the background. We use it in a way to darken the rest of our image and it really draws the viewer's eyes right to where we want them on our subject. So to create a vignette, you don't want to go to your effects and type in vignette down here. It is absolute garbage. Stay away from using that. The easiest way to do it is hit on your color inspector, create a new color wheel, and you'll see this little uh, mask appear up here. And you want to click on that, click add shape mask. Once we have selected the shape mask, we want to just adjust it to a point that we're kind of happy with. I would say somewhere maybe around, around there can take it out a little bit more and then what you want to do is you want to just grab the outside ring and just really go wild and just take it all the way out of frame what this is going to do is really just start to soften the vignette and not make it too obvious here you can see inside and outside make sure outside is selected what outside will do is affect everything outside the mask inside the default setting will just affect everything within the mask so next after we've so next, after we have selected outside, go to your master luma slider and start just bringing that down slightly. I would say somewhere maybe around there will do the trick. You don't want to go too crazy because once again, it looks fake. You want to just go take it down to a point where you think, yeah, you know what? That looks pretty realistic. So I would say maybe somewhere around there. The other thing you guys can do as a kind of little bonus tip, you can go in and desaturate outside the mask. So if you want to desaturate what's outside the mask, just take your master slider and just take that down also. So you can just go just slightly desaturated look, maybe, maybe somewhere around there. I think that does the trick. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If this really helped you, please think about giving it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I will catch you guys in the next one.